Every year in South Africa, thousands of teenage boys of the Hosa tribe undergo ritual circumcision, which according to ancient custom will make them men. But there are growing concerns that too many of these ceremonies are ending in dreadful mutilation or death. People in Power asked a South African filmmaker who has himself been through the ritual to investigate. I am a Xhosa man. There are 10 million Xhosa people in my country, South Africa. Even in the 21st century, many of our ancient customs remain as strong as ever. All Xhosa boys must be circumcised at a rite of passage known as Ugwaluga, which means initiation. At the age of 18, I too was taken to the mountain. Without access to medicine, doctors or even water to drink, my foreskin was cut off. Only then could I say in the end order, I am a man. This tradition is woven into the fabric of our society. What happens on the mountain has always been considered taboo, but in the past 10 years, more than 500 boys are known to have died. Hundreds more have lost their penises. Our proud history is casting a shadow of shame across our future. In this film, I will follow a young boy as he prepares for his circumcision. When you're a young boy, what you're most afraid of is pain. I will meet a mother grieving for her lost son. I miss him so much. And I know I cannot turn back the clock. And I will hear from the victim of a botched circumcision. Initiation ceremonies happen twice a year, in June and in December. With each new season, another wave of horror stories seems to arrive. I asked the president of the Congress of Traditional Leaders, Chief Patekile Olomisa, what was going on. The practice shows no sign of abating. This year, around 40,000 boys will go for circumcision. Sibusi Sogata is a pupil at Queen's College in the Eastern Cape, the heartland of the closer people. In a few days' time, he will leave his school to fulfill his obligations and become a man. As the Kosa boy, for me to believe, for me to understand, for me to know that from the position I am in right now to the position where I'm going to be able to say, I am now on my way to becoming a man, I have to go through circumcision in the way and practices of my culture. The most obvious part of it is that they, 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 cut off your foreskin and that's all I know and I mean that's all boys do know. Well I go to a very prestigious school, Queen's College Boys High School. It's steeped in traditions, it's steeped in in the past, it's been around for decades. It's a school that prides itself on transition, on adaptation, on life lessons. It is from elite schools like this that my country's future leaders will emerge. But as a head teacher, Chris Hacker is aware even our most prestigious establishments are not immune from the dangers of circumcision. We had the tragedy this year where one of our senior pupils died 
uh, during the course of his uh, initiation. Uh, that impacted profoundly on the school. This is the first time that has happened at Queen's. And we have been aware of it happening um, quite often in the Eastern Cape area in particular, but never has it come so close to home. Uh, the boy was a first-team rugby player. He was a tough guy. He was a very good chap. Uh, he was rushed to hospital. He died within 24 hours of the um, infection first being noticed. And there's no doubt that pressure is put on them from the men folk in the family. The mothers who've sat in the chair where you're sitting now have uh, virtually every single time said, Mr. Harker, I would, not, I would like not to, my boy to go through this, but it's the uncles and the grandparents, grandfathers that are putting the pressure. The boy would rather die in the bush than admit that he hasn't managed to cope with the, the whole ritual. Although it is Busiso's father who must take him to the mountain, he has been raised by a single mother. This is the case for most children in South Africa today. She shared her concerns with me. What frightens me the most, and I think I can speak on behalf of uh, most mothers is the fact that every channel you, 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 you go to, there's like something about that are ill-treated, kids become septic, admitted in hospital and whatever. We give birth to these kids. We breastfeed them. And the next thing gets to a stage where for three weeks, you're not allowed to know anything about what's happening to a kid. His grandmother has witnessed boys leaving for the bush many times before. She now believes there should be an alternative. Now I'm nursing the fear you go back. The more lusus busonga lele than funanga yes bele le abu yanga salika kuhle ku society. Ashe as a grandmother, la pain as I feel is shundana is killing me. As well, the city is painful, so fuck injection, your pains, painkiller. There's no injection, pa. So, Kakanje, Raka, me no soup, silly shangle, because I still shangai slowed. Despite the death of his schoolmate, Sibusiso is determined that he will follow tradition. Hospital, I think, I would call it a last, last, last resort. The pressure from both his peers and our society is strong. Go ahead and believe that I don't have to go get circumcised in the bush to become a man. Go ahead and believe that I can live my life without being circumcised. But for my belief and from my perspective, I do have to go to the bush. This is the last night that Sibusiso will spend as a boy. The women who have raised him must say goodbye to their child. For the next three weeks, they will have no contact. I love you. I know you'll be. I know you'll be. You'll be fine, I know. Okay. Okay. I'll see you when you get back. Sure. Okay. What if I die? What if I die? At least I will die knowing that it's something I wanted. Would I like to die? No. Would I like to come out of there fully fledging into manhood in my culture? That would be the biggest achievement. That is my ultimate goal. Sibusiso's circumcision will be performed by Mr. Kekiso, a traditional surgeon who is following in his father's footsteps. Long seven is good to all and the ones. You call him on 1978 in the ones and the sevens. Although every year he will perform circumcision on more than 
100 boys. He has no medical training and no access to even the most basic of modern medicines. In response to the rising number of deaths, regulations have been introduced which state that Mr. Tekiso can only circumcise boys who have been declared medically fit. Was I full of sunlight? Ah. How's it doing? The time has come for Sibusiso to be cut. First, his hair. Next, will be his foreskin. Ah. I'm not going to say that I'm not going to say that I'm not Though Mr. Kekiso is well aware of his place as a role model, for him, the ritual is also a lucrative business. Sibusiso will remain with Mr. Kikiso for the next three weeks. It will be an anxious wait for his family until he returns home. Pastor and Dr. Mamisa Nguyeni has been instrumental in introducing the new legislation. As the executive director of public health in Mandela Bay, she has her own views on what is going wrong. Am chungi leyo, kubaga lo kuba ninsi, ya balega ki madu ba konba oke okay, ba hundred and twenty emy. But you know better than no ba yeny hundred ya makwek dina you twelve thousand gand a season in three weeks. The doctor then told me about one case which continues to trouble her. Kube kolo use konin Tim chonga pep swin Tim bon balum dan. Kukundrant that patient was Tembaloid. His was one of more than 50 cases I discovered. But Temba was the only one who was prepared to speak to me about the shame of losing his penis. Because of the chance Go, 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 go
why is Annette to be Kubega in Ape Minica? Nacon and the Nazinus has been watching us, Yainazi, Yay rope, Yay rope, Nacon. You so glad seen in the dark galus if I go by and go right, Yacon. Candy Bamba Panga Pambi and his feel, Yacon. So in the Babiso put one low that look like so and the cousin and the problem deny. Yeah. And you could come again poke because of my baby are fast. Yeah, go on. Over the past ten years, surgeons have tried and failed to reconstruct Temba's penis. Like we are Bablung Brian. But in the DN banners and one can go part. Like this girl bang a banana. I need to find the better way because I couldn't say in second. I'm not talking about your phone that you want to steam. It's the most I could cause one as long as I can go here, Mr. Satin. Nacon. Younger in the most you could go to make a good. Yeah. So, um, now, um, no comes as I'm the full phone end opera. I couldn't be full for the lion yan. Internet phone that you can't go. I could not imagine how Temba lived. The very act which was supposed to make him more of a man had actually done the opposite. And this Wem Sindwana is the first closer mother to speak publicly about the death of her son at initiation school. A hard knock was on my door to say my son is not well. By 10 o'clock or half past 10, my son was gone. He died of septicemia and furthermore, the post-mortem revealed that he, he had total collapse of all his internal organs. And this way had made sure that she followed the Department of Health advice to the letter. I mean, this is a boy who just a few days before going to initiation school, I took him to my own private medical practitioner, somewhere in Vincent, who examined him and he was given a clean bill of health. The boy that I knew is not the kind of boy who would have kept quiet when something was not right. That's why I'm saying in this story, there are missing gaps for me. Last year, 300 boys were hospitalized and more than 40 are known to have died. Our children have become purely a statistics and then it's filed in the, in the files and it goes to the archives. Then again the same story repeats itself. It's a vicious cycle that goes on and on and on. And this way is now speaking out to try and promote safer alternatives. Maybe Lita could have died the other way, but he did not die the other way, he died this way. And I'm not going to keep quiet. It was not right. It will never be right. And I will say this until I draw my last breath. The boni ba uleke kakulu nam change into ba kuti kuti kasi spila kulo apu abanda bangu mama abati kundo tibeni no kwalu kwakomda na banga bina lezui abanda bangu mama have been ignored kakulu. This is not about me having an issue with initiation. This is about me saying enough is enough. Why is it so closed that other people only get to know about this when someone has died? And this way is calling for change. She insists that women should be more involved. I went to hear the response of Monwabi Sipaza a government official from the Eastern Cape. In our custom, a lady who bears children at home, those are not her children. That's how we grew up. Those are the children of her father. Hence now, oh mama, they want to, to come in, in areas where they are not supposed to, because they have got their important roles. I asked him what more the government should do. The government is currently developing a policy. As we know that these days, when we are going to develop a legislation, it must be preceded by a policy. 
It's a pity for those boys who lost their manhood through negligence of others. But those people should be held responsible, starting from the fathers, the brothers, everybody. I am beginning to realize how complex the issue of initiation has become. The clash in our traditional beliefs and modern medicine. The breakdown in our family structures. The change in gender roles. With all this in mind, it is time to return to the bush and see how Sibusiso is doing. But before Sibusiso can leave, he must observe the final rituals. He must bid farewell to his fellow initiates. Take a final bath in the river. Rub his body with butter. And burn his clothes and bedding. Sibusiso left home as a boy. He will return there as a man. It mustn't stop because it's part of our culture. It mustn't stop because it's something that is, it's something that is identity as a Tosa man. After I had finished my filming, I received a call from Andy Siwe telling me that she needed to find closure. She had asked her brother Velile to tell the whole truth about Lita's death. And she wanted me to film it. No, I just want to get to the bottom of this. Resuscitation. Resuscitation. Mm. I wanted him to go to hospital. <laughs> Over the course of making this film, I have learned how complicated and how sensitive the issue of initiation has become. I am pleased that we are beginning to discuss this more openly. Some districts are now training traditional surgeons and she's remain closely involved in ensuring regulations are observed. But even in the week that we finished the film, there were 11 more deaths and 64 boys were hospitalized. The pressure our society places on young boys must be questioned. I know that I will never allow my son to risk his life like this unless more people are prepared to change and speak out more boys will die and more will have to live with the consequences of circumcision gone wrong as a proud Tosa man i want to preserve my culture but i also want to prevent more deaths i will not stop reporting until these tragedies are stopped